Senator Lee. On June 29th, 2017, you signed off on the third FISA renewal application. Did you read that application? Yes. So you, having been asked to sign off on it, you had read it. Uh, were you aware of the multiple errors and omissions that were later discovered and disclosed by the Inspector General? No. Uh, were you aware that the information provided by Christopher Steele, commonly referred to as the Steele dossier, was the basis of the assertions in the FISA application? I, I believe, Senator, that um, some of the assertions in the application are from Steele, my understanding is, but only some. Were you aware of the fact that the, the Steele dossier, which you've just acknowledged, was at least the partial basis for this, was bought and paid for by the Democratic National Committee and shared with the Hillary Clinton campaign? I don't believe I had that detailed information at the time. Okay, so you, you, you're being asked to do something significant. You're asked as the Deputy Attorney General, the Acting Attorney General in this circumstance, to sign off on something. And yet you don't have a critical piece of information. That's a problem. Yes, sir. It seems to me. Uh, it's a problem, especially given that the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act can be used, can be manipulated, and in fact, has been abused and manipulated to us, so as to spy on a presidential campaign, a campaign that turned out to be for the man who became the 45th president of the United States. Were you aware that the application mischaracterized Christopher Steele's past work with the FBI uh, as a confidential human source and failed to include information from his source questioning his reliability? No, I was not aware of that. If you had known about these errors and omissions as of uh, June 29th, 2017, would you have signed off on it? No. Why not? Senator, my understanding is that these FISA applications follow a, followed a very rigorous process and, uh, and that they were accurate, that they were verified. The whole principle of having an agent sign it under oath is that you can rely on the facts. And the whole point of having the Deputy Attorney General sign off on them was to have somebody who would be accountable to someone who was in turn accountable to the voters who could verify their accuracy. Is that right? And yet that did not happen. I don't think that the idea is for the person who, the, the person who approves the filing, which is the Attorney General, the Deputy, or the National Security Assistant Attorney General, to personally verify the facts. It's to make sure the accurate process has been followed and that the document sets forth a, a proper basis Sure. It did set forward. But surely basis. the process isn't an ass. The, the process isn't there simply to provide cover, to do exactly. something unlawful. The process is there, ideally, one would hope, to make sure the rule of law is respected. Correct. Before you became the, uh, the acting attorney general in, in, in this context, didn't you at, at, at some point get a sense for the politicization uh, within the FBI, at the top level of the FBI, even beyond Jim Comey? No. You didn't have any sense that there was a targeting of a presidential candidate uh, uh, and, and uh, later someone who became the president of the United States? I did not have that impression. <clears throat> what was the legal basis for appointing Robert Mueller? Um, and didn't you become concerned at some point about the composition of Mueller's staff? Let's take, for example, uh, Mr. Weissman. <clears throat> Mr. Weissman is now fundraising for Joe Biden, as is his right. Uh, previously, he, he was an advocate of the Hillary Clinton campaign. Uh, did that bother you that you had known Democratic operatives, overwhelmingly Democratic-leaning people who were part of this team? It would have been preferable, Senator, to have a, a more politically diverse group. But if they follow the rules, their political ideology wouldn't matter. <clears throat> if, if, if everyone followed the rules, political ideologies wouldn't matter. And well, but the, Senator, I had Bob Mueller in charge of this. and, and uh, Based upon that and based upon my conversations with him, uh, I'm fairly confident that the political bias did not enter into that investigation. At any point, were you asked by any member of Congress to launch a criminal investigation of President Trump? I don't believe so. Getting back to the, the FISA application process, why didn't you urge the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court to appoint an amicus curiae given the obvious sensitivities of this investigation? Well, Senator, I have to tell you in context, you asked me about reading the, the FISA. Um, there, there are a lot of FISA applications that come through. Some are more significant than others. This one was unusual in that I already knew about it because of the Russia investigation. Most of the FISA applications that are presented to me, I'm the last eyes on them before they're filed to the court, and I know nothing about them. This one I actually knew a fair amount about, and they gave it to me in advance so I could review it. Not sure I read every page, but I was familiar with what was in it. Um, but I, I, 
I, it actually, if you read the report, I know you, most people haven't seen the unredacted version, but my recollection of it, I haven't seen it for some time, is it was actually fairly persuasive. Uh, and so, and it had already been approved three times. This was I, just a reauthorization. Uh, th th thank you. There, now, you, you indicated moments ago that Mr. McCabe did not lie to you. Uh, but you also acknowledged that he was not fully candid. What's the, what's the difference? Well, you know, lying is when you ask somebody a direct question, you get a, 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 a false answer. Candor is when you're forthcoming with information that, that somebody needs to know. And I believe, Senator, that uh, Mr. McCabe should have recognized that when I became acting attorney general, I needed to know about Mr. Comey's memos. Uh -oh. He needed to understand that, and he did not tell that to me until a couple of hours before they showed up in the New York Times. What, so what and when did he tell you about the Comey memos? And when should he have done that? And also, did, uh, didn't he, he, he waited for at least a week before telling you about some of the, the intel-related concerns? Uh, weren't you his boss? Correct. And so he had an obligation to tell you. And well, yet I don't know if he had a legal obligation, Senator, but uh, you know, my philosophy as a manager was that you have a responsibility to tell the boss things that uh, you, you know they need to know. Right. And that's a pretty important thing that I would have needed to know. And, and so that would have been regarded as material. The omission of that, had you been aware of it, probably would have been grounds for termination. If I had asked him and he had misrepresented it, yes. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I see my time has expired. Why, well, yes.